A car can't last forever. No matter how much you love it or how well you take care of it, eventually the day will come when it's no longer useful, and it's time to say goodbye to it. If it can no longer be driven, it usually gets scrapped. Expensive cars are often an exception to that rule, though. Their value and rarity generally means that people refurbish them to keep them going for much longer. The cars in this video weren't met with so kind a of fate. They might be valuable, but they've all been abandoned. Here's a fine place to start. It's a Lagonda LG45 from 1936, and one with a fine racing pedigree. Unusually, its odometer reads in kilometers per hour rather than miles per hour, which suggests that it's one of very few Lagondas that was built for the European market. Inside that heavily weathered and rusted body are the original six-cylinder 4.5-liter Meadows OHV unit and its companion carburetors. That's the powerhouse that made it one of the fastest cars of its era. A Lagonda of this style sealed victory in the legendary 25 hours of Le Mans race in 1935, although not this exact model. This is a four-seater version of the car, and so it came from the luxury end of the range. Not long after that glorious moment at Le Mans, Lagonda experienced serious financial difficulties and was rescued by Bentley. This car dates back to a time before the takeover. And although it was forgotten in a shed for decades, it still fetched over $100,000 when it went to auction in 2015. When you buy a house, you also buy any sheds or outhouses that exist on the land belonging to the house. If nobody's been inside those sheds or outhouses for a long time, you might find that your new house comes with an unexpected bonus. For example, this 1960 Type 2 Jaguar that turned up in a shed in Iowa in the USA in 2019. It's one of the first 1,000 Mark II Jaguars ever made, and it had been hidden in the shed for almost 40 years before it was discovered. It looks like the new owner arrived just in time. The barn had started to collapse, and the car is scratched and marked by falling debris and dust. Aside from the cosmetic damage, though, it's still in pretty good condition. The original 3.8-liter inline-six engine is still under the hood, and in theory, the car is still in drivable condition after being parked safely in 1983. Amazingly, the Smith's radio mobile under the dash of the mostly unspoiled interior still powers up almost 60 years after the car was built. Jaguars aren't just great-looking cars. They were built to last. Speaking of old Jaguars, here's another long-forgotten classic that turned up in 2014 after many years hiding in the darkness. It's a 1954 Jaguar XK120 SE that sold for over $80,000 at auction, despite its slightly shabby condition. It appears to have been bought brand new in the year of its release and then parked in a barn in Georgia, USA, at some point during the 1970s, perhaps after developing a mechanical fault. The SE variant of the car came with lightened flywheels, modified camshafts, and souped-up 3.4-liter inline six-cylinder engines, all of which are still present and correct inside this model. All of that equipment combined to give the vehicles 203 pounds of torque and 180 horsepower. Internally, though, it's clear that a lot of work will be required to get this old Jag back to its best. The walnut dashboard is just about still there, but rot has set in and rust around the upholstery is an obvious issue. It's not past the point of no return, though, and the right expert could have this car looking as good as new if the correct parts can be acquired. There's a little bit of a mystery surrounding this rare Stanford Type S cycle car, and the question of how it came to be in this sorry state is only part of that mystery. Even though it's clearly been abandoned for a long time, someone has attempted to perform restoration work on it in the distant past. We know that because while the majority of the body is still the original aluminum, the hood and some parts of the front end have been remade using steel. That doesn't affect its value too much, though, because the original Jaeger clock and tachometer are still there on the dashboard. When the car was found, it had a mechanic's tool bag on the seat, as if someone left their tools there partway through a repair job and intended to come back one day and finish it. The unusual three-wheeled car comes with a ruby four-cylinder engine, albeit one that was found next to the vehicle rather than inside it. It was first registered as a 9977 AM75 in France on August 1st, 1951, 
and was later bought by Roger Balin in 1967. As of 2015, it had never been registered to anybody else, and so whoever bought it for $49,000 at auction that year was only its third ever owner. Over the many years that the 24 Hours of Le Mans race competition has existed for, many rare and unique vehicles have been entered into it, some of which were one of a kind. As an example, here's a 1982 Mazda 254i Le Mans race car. It's one of only two units of the vehicle that was ever built by Mazda, and so you'd assume that somebody would be given the task of taking good care of it. But instead, it went missing for more than 30 years after it competed in the race. The cars performed poorly in the competition, and so were shipped back to Japan in disgrace when the race was complete. One of them crashed and had to be scrapped after a speedway racing accident in Fuji a few years later. This one, however, was painted pink and escaped into private ownership in rural western Japan. When it was identified in February 2019, it was said that the current owner had no idea of its history. Mazda has since bought the car back from the owner and has taken it to a specialty shop to be restored to its original condition. After that, it might even return to racing at classic events. Yellow is a very bold color for a car. It takes a vehicle of a certain style and pedigree to carry the color off without looking ridiculous. But this ISO Grifo has no problems in that department. Even after being left in a barn for three decades and attracting a little rust, it's still a strikingly beautiful car. This is a lesser known luxury Italian vehicle built in 1967 but overshadowed during its era by the Maseratis and Lamborghinis of the time. Only 413 units of the car were built and of them only 34 of them came with right hand drive. This is one of them. The Grifo's current owner bought it in 1986 and intended to have it re-sprayed in Burgundy before using it as a daily drive, but the work was never carried out, and so the car languished in a barn for the next 30 years. He eventually accepted that he was never going to find a use for his expensive collectible in 2016 and decided to sell it on at auction, where it went for a little over $80,000. One of the joys of being a car dealer is that sometimes brand new vehicles are delivered to your doorstep, and you can choose to keep them if you have the means to pay for them. When this 1991 Corvette ZR1 was delivered to a Chevrolet dealer, he fell in love with it at first sight, and knew he had to keep it instead of selling it on to anybody. Unfortunately for the car, the owner decided that keeping it and driving it were two different things. By the time it emerged from hiding in 2019, it still had fewer than 300 miles on the clock. It's barely moved in almost 30 years. The flip side of that is that the car is in near showroom condition, which is almost unheard of for a fourth generation ZR1. Technically speaking, it's still covered by its manufacturer's statement of origin because it's never been titled. A car that's been in storage for this long inevitably needs a little mechanical attention. So prior to offering it for sale, the owner had the fuel delivery system cleaned, the battery replaced, and an oil change. As a result, it's said to run like new. We've all heard of barn finds before in the context of valuable cars, but how about basement finds? It ought to be a valid term because that's how this 1962 Alfa Romeo Giulietta SZ was discovered. Only 217 units of this Alpha were ever made, so when one turns up on the market, it's big news. When one turns up in near-perfect condition after spending 35 years below a house in Turin, Italy, it's even bigger news. Apparently, the mechanic who owned it was forced to abandon it in the basement because his car lift broke. Why he, as a mechanic, was unable to repair the fault is unknown. He eventually passed away in 2018 without leaving a will leading to the discovery of the all-original car, which has never been refurbished or restored and is in near immaculate state. The Italian government eventually sent the car for auction, where it sold for $650. That price didn't only cover the car, though. It also covered the cost of digging a hole and winching the car out of the basement so it could be transported to its new home. Discovering a single Corvette as a barn find would be considered lucky. Finding a whole fleet of 36 of them at once is the stuff of dreams, and yet 
It happened in real life in Manhattan in 2014. Their origin story is a little unlikely. Back in 1989, the music channel VH1 gave away a collection of 36 Corvettes, dated between 1953 and 1989, to one lucky winner. That winner was one Dennis Amodeo of Long Island, New York. No sooner had he won the cars than he was contacted by artist Peter Max, who was interested in buying them for his own collection. Max paid for the cars, had them brought to his Manhattan parking garage, and then for reasons best known to himself, never did anything with them. It wasn't until someone tried to track the cars down in 2014 that they were rediscovered, and Max was contacted and persuaded to part with them. It's taken another six years to clean up and restore the whole fleet, but they're now heading to auction one at a time. Hopefully, whoever ends up with them this time might drive them the way they were designed to be driven. If you ask the average person which type of car they'd love to discover as a barn find, we suspect at least half of all the people you asked would say a Ferrari. That almost never happens, though, because who would abandon a Ferrari in a barn? Apparently, at least one person has. Here's a 1979 Ferrari 308 GTS that's been treated with such disrespect that the roof of the car has been used as storage space for boxes and pallets, and as a makeshift climbing frame by cats. Unfortunately, that means that cats have also used it as a toilet. That's made the exterior of the car scratched, dirty, and more than a little smelly. By the time of its discovery in 2015, it had been parked up for at least 15 years by an owner who says he no longer had a use for it after he bought a Lamborghini Countach. The one small mercy in all this is that he kept the doors locked, so the interior is clean and unspoiled. The Ferrari will need a new coat of paint and a little attention to the bodywork, not to mention some fumigation. But once that's taken care of, it should be almost as good as new. Our next car has spent a little longer than 15 years in a barn. To be more specific, it had been in a barn for 40 years by the time it was found in Wales 2016. But that was barely over half of its whole life. This is a 1938 Morgan 44, one of the most beautiful British sports cars of the 1930s. They're not especially fast, and they're notoriously hard to handle, but they exude class and sophistication. The two fours in the name come from the fact that it was the first Morgan to come with four wheels, and the four-cylinder engine that it came with, which replaced the V-twin motorcycle engines that were standard in the Morgans of the past. To be more specific, it's a 1.1-liter Coventry Climax engine that offers a feeble 34 horsepower. But that barely matters because the car is so light. Every Morgan ever made was hand-built, which might go some way to explain why this one has lasted such a long time. It's now in the hands of a new owner, who's cleaned it up and replaced the tires. But aside from that, they were able to get it back up and running without swapping out any other parts. To those of you who think there's no such thing as a perfect barn find, we present this. A 1967 Shelby Mustang GT350 in original condition with only one previous owner. The highly sought after car turned up in Ontario, Canada in 2016 with an asking price of $70,000. Given the fact that it's in reasonably good condition with no replacement parts or alterations, we think that might count as a bargain. While it might only have had one owner, that owner tells quite a remarkable story. He bought the car and used it as a daily drive, including taking it to the legendary Woodstock Music Festival, before visiting Carroll Shelby at the Dearborn Test Track. The gas crisis of the 1970s made it expensive to drive, though, and so it was parked up in favor of a more economical Volkswagen. As is so often the case, the owner intended to come back to it, but never did. And so now it's a fascinating auction piece with an approximate value of $70,000. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.